Welcome. Welcome to Hamilton Park United Church of Christ during the weekend of May 16, 2021. It's a day when we wonder about the ascension of Jesus and we consider our response to all that has taken place in his life. For Jesus has gone up with a shout and we are invited we're invited to clap our hands in praise and joy, seeking to join him in his life and ministry. And so now let us enter into worship, allowing Marty Guglielmo to bring us into the service today. As Jesus prepares to leave the disciples, he opens their minds and blesses them. The result after he ascends is their return to Jerusalem with great joy and a desire for continually worshiping and blessing God in the temple. What happens when the eyes of our hearts are enlightened? We know the hope that we have been called to as we wait for the Spirit with hope. And we celebrate with abandon because we have no other ruler than the one who reigns with love and justice. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their story, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. Dancing changes us. It transforms us and brings us to life, awakens our senses. Imagine the dreams and the heartbeat and the life stirring in Jesus and his disciples as he readied them for his next chapter of ministry. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their story, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. This is the call. Look to the skies, be it rain or shine. We lift up our heads to meet the day. Look around and see that you do not dance alone. We fortify our hearts with compassion and action. If rain still lingers, open the umbrellas of praise and set out anyway. For we are called to dance again.
Let us pray. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, help us to put on our dancing shoes so that we can be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Come and dance with us, engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their story, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. Our focus reading for today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what Abba, God, promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. Every week, we've been talking about people who had a dream they sought to live out. This week, our dreamer is Jesus. Jesus had dreams. Jesus dreamt of a better world where all are treated equally. Even in Jesus' day, there were people who thought they were better than others, even in houses of worship. They excluded and treated some as if they were undeserving. Women were treated much lower than men. Those with disabilities and other infirmities were thought to be unclean. But Jesus had a dream. We know this because he included everyone, especially those who were treated badly or excluded. He touched sick people and reached out to immigrants. He talked with and made friends with women and treated them with equality. Jesus had a dream. He talked about the kingdom of God being a place where neighbors would go out of their way to help others, especially those who were suffering or were strangers. If somebody is left out, Jesus shows us that we need to reach out to them. Even though Jesus did these things a long time ago, when he left, he said that we were to continue what it was he started. So it is that we take on his dream to find ways to show welcome and caring to all.
so it is, that we take on Jesus' dream to find ways to show welcome and caring to all. But what does that look like for this generation? What does that look like as we crawl out from the caves of this pandemic? What does that look like when a lot of how we understood life just a little over a year ago has shifted so dramatically? Now, perhaps you are like me. In worrying about these things, you see, I have to admit that when it comes to regathering here in this church building next week, after almost a year away, I have no idea how many will return. You see, just before this pandemic, as a church, we prayerfully discerned what direction we wanted to take. And we all agreed wholeheartedly that we wanted to focus, focus our lives, our goals, our church on finding new ways, new ways to reach out to others with the love and the life of Christ. We committed to trying new things in order to grow disciples and fill this church with new life, even if that meant letting go, letting go of some of the old ways of life. Now, at the time, of course, we had no idea that there was a dangerous virus already beginning to scratch its claws into our future And we have now journeyed through a scary, difficult, and challenging year. On the other hand, perhaps you are like me in this as well. Even though I have no idea, I have no idea what the future holds. But I've never been afraid of it. Yes, indeed, this past year has been hard and even painful at times. Many of us have suffered greatly, including my own husband who lost his father to this disease. But we have never been alone. This pandemic has been something that the entire community has endured. The entire globe has shifted from the impact. Yes, this past year has given us reason to be fearful, but I have never been afraid of the future, and I'm not going to be afraid of the future now. Now, perhaps it's easier for those of us who have had to endure difficulties and challenges in the past But something that often comes up in conversation during challenging times is how people can get through life's struggle. How they could possibly get through life's struggles without having a faith, without having a faith that there is life on the other side of the challenges. For without faith, I don't know how anybody, I don't know how anybody even gets out of bed on rainy days, much less during a pandemic. Now, as a child, I learned the song, it only takes a spark to keep a fire going, and soon all those around will warm up to its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, You want to sing, it's fresh like spring. You want to pass it on. Indeed, indeed, this thing, this thing that we have is something special. It's something that we want to pass on to others. For it is in the gathered community 
the gathered community in Christ, that we are given abundant hope in what tomorrow will bring. Even, probably even, especially when we may not know exactly where we are going or what it will look like. For we know that we're going to be okay. How can we keep that promise to ourselves? It's just too big to contain. But how do we share this thing that we call faith? How do we travel down the road hand in hand with Jesus, dreaming his dream, showing welcome and caring to all that we meet? What will that look like? Our reading from the Gospel of John shed some light on the topic, but in order to get a fuller perspective of what we read today, we need to turn back just a little bit, maybe a page in the chapter. And we read to find out what happened right before Jesus said the words that we read today. You see, after Jesus had been crucified, while the disciples had been hiding away in fear, the resurrected Jesus came among them and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And he stood among them, he ate with them, and he allowed them to reach out and touch him. You see, he met them right where they were. And he breathed peace out upon them. And he ushered them away from cowering away in fear into a future filled with hope and dreams. And that hope is what birthed the church. You see, all people in all places look for things. They look for things that will bring peace into their lives. And the world offers all kinds of false fixes, false fixes to help people think that they've found that peace. It may be too much alcohol, too many drugs, too many clothes, too much shopping, or just too much of too much. But sooner or later, these temporary fixes fail. And when they do fail, we are left far worse off than we were in the first place. And when this happens, we become emotionally unhinged and confused and lost. And these are the times that the world, that the world threatens to swallow us up whole. And like the disciples in our reading today, we too want to cower away and hide in fear. Makes sense after all, doesn't it? But Jesus finds us. For it isn't Jesus that is ever lost. We are. We are lost in the void left behind by our lack of faith. But Jesus is always, always seeking us, stepping into the mess that we find ourselves in. And Jesus is always breathing life into our hollowed out spaces. All we have to do is breathe in. And like the disciples, when we are lost, it can be so hard to recognize Jesus standing among us, but Jesus keeps coming. Oftentimes, it's the feet and the hands and the mouths and the hearts of the faithful like you and like me. It's these things that Jesus uses to enable others to be able to recognize and experience him. But even 
Even we who are a part of the church can find ourselves unsure and confused at times. Have you ever been confused? I mean, really, really confused? Now, there's a story about a university student who was seen going around campus with a large K printed on his shirt. And when someone asked him what the K stood for, he said, confused, of course. But the questioner replied, but, but you don't spell confused with a K. Well, the student answered, you just don't know. You have no idea how confused I am. Well, after meeting his disciples right where they were, and after reassuring them that nothing, even death itself, couldn't stop what it was that he was ushering into this world, Jesus then, Jesus then turned their confusion into clarity to get them on the road towards the future. But it seems like, it seems like the real problem, not only for the disciples at that time, but for the disciples who have followed, is that our feelings of confusion and bewilderment can quickly cause us to shut down and cause us to try to turn away from what it is that Jesus has taught us and what it is that Jesus is calling us towards. And so Jesus promises to send in reinforcements, saying in our reading today, I am sending upon you what Abba God promised. So stay here. Stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This promise, this presence, this Holy Spirit guide, if you will, is the kick in the pants that we often need to get going. For it calls us out of the shelters that we have built around ourselves. And it gets us back on our feet, walking hand in hand with Jesus and ministering to all of God's people wherever life takes us. So just like happened to the disciples all those many years ago, it is right here and right now that Jesus comes. Jesus comes among us, comforting us and reassuring us that we are not alone. We are not alone in this mess that we've found ourselves. No way. And like them, we can take a deep breath in of the peace that he has to shower upon us. But we can't stay there. We can't stay frozen in place in fear. And just like those first disciples, Jesus doesn't allow us to stay long in the feel-good moments. No, Jesus gets us moving once again, for we are sent out. We are sent out into the broken and fearful world to proclaim a message of grace, a message of love, a message of hope. And it's a message that is captured in the motto of our denomination, the United Church of Christ. It's a message that says, no matter who you are or where you are, on this life's journey, you are welcome here. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. And this here is the church of Jesus Christ. But the problem for us today is in getting that message out to a waiting world. How will that look? How will that look in this generation? For it will be different than it was for the first generation. Heck, 
It's different among every individual and every generation. But each and every one of us have feet and hands and mouths and hearts to allow the life and the love of Christ to soar among and within and through us into the broken, hurting, and lost world. All we have to do is get moving and let Jesus do the rest. Amen. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to move in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Psalm 47 encourages us. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, a great sovereign over all of the earth. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises to Sing praises to our sovereign. Sing praises. And so we sing praises. We praise God for the beauty of the world in all of its diversity. But the world and its people are hurting. We pray for holy healing for our troubled planet and for all who are struggling in body, mind, relationship, and spirit. We remember those who are suffering or feeling left out this day, especially these things that we hold up to you now. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Indeed, teach us to dance with the beat of your holy heart. Be with each of us now. May the dance of your spirit ever call us to engage with you and with the needs of those around us. Lead us. Guide us. Surround and fill us.
Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Next week is the last week of our Easter season series. For the season ends on the day of Pentecost, a day that we remember how the flames of the Spirit danced among all people. And on this special day, we will return to regathering in person at Hamilton Park United Church of Christ. And we are so grateful. We are grateful for the ways that this church has been able to continue throughout this difficult time of separation. And we are thankful for the many ways that you have continued to support and give life to the movement, and to the ministries of the church. For you, and you, and you, are the hands and the feet of Christ in this world. And so let us take a moment. Let us take a moment to listen to the Spirit. Listen to the Spirit as we prepare to hold up that which we dedicate to the work of Christ this day. I'm listening. I am listening. Spirit, speak to me. I'm listening. I am listening. Spirit, speak to me. My ears are wide open. My eyes are now open. To see what I may be I'm listening I am listening Spirit, speak to me I'm listening I am listening in this moment of spirit silence. speaks to me. I can hear the voices of all my kind. I'm listening, singing. I am listening, tweeting, howling into the wind. My ears are wide open. To see for you be and me. Oh, oh, oh. I'm listening in this moment of silence. I am listening. I hear spirit speak through me. In dedication, let us pray. Gracious and holy God of the dance, accept what we hold up to you today, our time, our talent, and our treasure, as well as our faltering steps, 
our brokenness, our leftovers, our hope, our risking, our lives. Bless and transform all that we hold up and all that we hold back, that new life may soar. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We hope that this service and our time together has inspired something inside of you to dream of ways that you can make a difference in this world. For all of us, each and every one of us has the potential to do amazing things life-changing things. In a moment, there will be a few announcements that will follow that invite you more fully into the life of this congregation. More importantly, we will resume worship in person next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And this will be followed by a bring-your-own picnic on the church lawn. We hope to see you really soon. For we are a church. We are a church that seeks to meet you wherever and whenever you are. However and whoever you find yourself to be. In the hopes, in the hopes that we can dance together as we join in God's abundant love. The poet Rumi invites us into the dance with these words. Dance. Dance when you're broken open. Dance if you've torn the bandage off. Dance in the middle of fighting. Dance in your blood. Dance when you're perfectly free, dance. May it be so as we go in peace. And may the loving God, the risen Christ, 
and the dancing spirit fill you with all you need for the days ahead, the days ahead. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you.